pour nous aussi la théorie c'est très and important us, uh, et la théorie uh, économique very important to, to be here and, donc merci and, uh, merci à tous spécialement à les amis de Wisher thank you very much to well, all our friends English. from uh, Wisher I'm now sorry I had to speak in, in French in France you know I, I, <laughs> <is there? laughs> well Juan Gorrutia is, was the founder of Las Indias, the co cooperative commune, community I live in and I work in for the last 15 years. He was my master, so I will not be neutral at all. And he is probably one of the deepest economists in the, in the Spanish-speaking world and in the sharing world. During the 80s, he started to shocked the world of the academic world saying things like internet is a postmodernity or uh, talking about the new the possibility of a new abundance economy just in the opposite side of traditional uh, economic concept of scarcity as a motor of uh, of economics itself uh, scarcity as a main question of economics so Juan, what did happen in the 90s in order to convert a distinguished academic in a communitarian and a theoretician of abundance? Well, I don't know what happened, but I know that uh, I was a classical professor, very orthodox in economics, and I met that bunch of people who were and absolutely crazy people, uh, and their craziness was very attractive to me. And uh, on the one hand, because we all shared the idea of communitarism. My communitarism was, of course, very old, from the time of now, nous sommes en France, je pourrais parler en français pour dire que. We are in France, I could talk in, in French and then tell you that we lived on May 68 with a lot of intensity, and especially in, in the, in the uh, Basque, in Paris Basque, where I live. They made Frankfurtian ideas, and ideas coming from Marcus, in Francais, Marcus in German. And specifically, I was very much interested in, um, how do you say that, uh, was what Fritz Perls, an unorthodox psychologist, built in Big Sur, California. By the way, four days ago, I saw the final of Mad Men. I'm old, I'm still interested in broadcasting, you see. And uh, uh, it ended, ended exactly in Big Sur, in the Esalim Institute, where I have spent some time. So, and that was communitarism avant la lettre, etc. All right? So I met with these young people, and we decided to work together to build up a new way of thinking economically about the new ideas coming around of communitarism, and with two ideas, the importance of networking and how crucial is abundance. And uh, so we started to build a new model, because we need models. We need theory beyond practice and beyond uh, many other things I have been aware of since then. We need theory, and a theory that is not based on I, but on we. That's the idea, all right? In the, in the year uh, 2000 or 1999, I think, 
you, you work a book called The Economic of Abundance, uh, where you define very clearly, you know, because in this logic of abundance, in this theory of abundance, uh, net weaving, networking, made a very important role. So, what from an academic uh, model point of view, what networking is? Well, it's a horrible thing. I'm sorry, I could spend uh, half an hour telling you in a <laughs> blackboard what is an evolutionary game. But networking can be modeled. Mm. Networking is what you think it is. Uh, in enriching work, uh, net, a net of persons, a network of persons. But networking, from an academic point of view, is an evolutionary game in which randomly, at each stage of the game, pairs of people meet together and play another game. So they start to understand what are the preferences of the other people and what are their strategies. And eventually, and this is repeated as new uh, members of the network come in, this is repeated and goes in the limit to an equilibrium uh, in which some communal memes are built up, social habits. After, within this community, we have the social habits and we share these habits. And from then on, everything begins, okay? And uh, at the very limit, this, this limit is called uh, uh, evolutionary stable strategy, and it is mutants proof. It's in general, it's very difficult to get out of these habits. Right? Even if some people conquer you, etc., don't change. Okay. There, in, in, in this kind of modeling, it appears a concept that don't used to be very, right. very regular in economics. And I think it's very important because it's the, 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 the point we, we got together, the philosophical tradition and the, and the economic analysis that is fraternity. Oh yeah, fraternity for us is a very crucial term, a very crucial idea, and a very crucial practice. And what is fraternity? It's a very old idea. It comes from Epicuro, or yeah. uh, certainly from Aristotle, teleia philia, and means the pleasure of being together. And sharing these social habits I have told you before. And uh, because of fraternity, that includes trust. Somebody has spoken about trust. And uh, because trust, commitments can be taken uh, because of fraternity. Okay? And uh, um, fraternity is with, it's at the basis of abundance. Okay? And uh, why abundance? Through two ways. First way is change of costs, because of mutual trust, uh, transaction costs are gone. We eliminate a lot of trust. And something new comes up. I learn from them, which is the Matthew effect, based on St. Matthew uh, Gospel, okay? Some, those who have will get more, okay? So people tend to, to push in together a network where you can meet many other people. Uh, and this uh, produces returns, but not to a scale in this case, but to, to a scope. And this is formal terms too. But that means that you don't need to grow forever in the world in order to reach every, every return, but you, you can reach all the increasing returns you need in a local community, in a small community. And at the very end of that, that means that, my God, after all this, I have found again perfect competition in classical e e economics. Yes, but from a different point of view. And this is the point of view that builds up a fundament, uh, some f fundamental ideas for the communitarism and the sharing economy, I think. Okay? Although, if you allow me a little bit, of, I'm aware of that and it's horrible. 
but uh, one has to be careful because even within a small community, uh, which is an equilibrium, etc., revolution can happen. And that depends on the threshold of rebellion and depends on the structure of the network and it depends also of the knowledge we have of the other's threshold of rebellion. And under certain conditions, the community will disappear if all we realize that you know what I know, what she knows, etc., about the threshold of rebellion of all of us, and this will make things jump. And this explains a little bit what happened in many places in the last four or five years, starting in, I don't know, in Egypt or in Madrid or whatever, okay? And uh, that, I think that, on the one hand, that creates a paradox, because the, the, the academic result is that a community is very conservative in the sense that the threshold of rebellion, the number of people who are ready to change is very high, so it's very traditional, like in the United Kingdom. The closer is the revolution, the less structure is the community, like the United Kingdom, again. That's crazy ideas coming in this say we push you to build up things, okay? Yeah, I, I remember these, these ideas in year, maybe you don't know, but in year 2003, he published uh, a brochure called Rebellion, Boring, and Maps. And in year 2004, we have really big maps in Spain after the attack of March 11th uh, against the government. And even the many people close to the Spanish government and journalists uh, make the accusation to Juan of making the theory for rebellion in the streets, you know? And, 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 and they presented this book as a kind of handbook for rebels and, uh, and mobsters, you know? And well, I, the only thing I hope is that mobsters anywhere in the world, and especially in Spain, could study economics so much as this brochure does. You know, <laughs> that, that's quite interesting. But, well, the main thing of your work, our work during this time, is to have models, to have theory for the new world. Right. From the point of view of an economic modeling, you know, which are the main pieces? What, what do we have to work? Because many times we, I think uh, we focus too much in consumption. Right. You are right. But at that point, I want, to, I want to say that we are, and I am, lost in transition. <laughs> and that's why I try to build up these new foundations. Okay? This is it's not very easy, as I said at the beginning. And there are two pieces which are very complicated. One is how to model consumption. It's very easy from an orthodox point of view. It started with an eye. I have my own preferences. But if one, I want to start from we, because I, we belong to a community, it's quite difficult to build up a formal theory of consumption. I don't want to, to go on on that. And production, production maybe doesn't need a, th a theory. Some time, some people think, because as a matter of fact, there are cooperatives of production, especially in the Basque country where I come from, okay? But again, there are lots of problems that have to be solved once we are in this identitarian community for, for, for cooperatives to work. I think cooperatives work in a um, neighborhood in which the rest is pure capitalism. Well, universally speaking, when we are in the community we want a collection of overlapping small coalitions, then it's not that easy, all right, to produce cooperatively. And we have to solve this problem. And before we solve this problem, I enjoy very much the previous talks, for instance, but still I think there are many things we still do, don't, we don't know, okay? And we have to work on that. And I hope I convince the Indians, besides doing the thousands of things they do everywhere, to dedicate some time to do that, okay? <laughs> to work on that. 
and especially if you allow me, because this, 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 there is something I wanted to talk because, you know, because of this revolution, digital revolution, we uh, more than 35% of the goods that we interchange in the market are intangibles. All right? And intangibles in general are common goods and they make for communals. And how to regulate the, co the, the common goods, how to treat them, how to allocate them is a very difficult thing. And, well, if you are an orthodox economist, you don't care very much, this is a small part. But if you want to build up a new model based on sharing, you need to understand how commons have to be treated. And the solutions we have now for commons are local and ad hoc. And uh, we must, we must uh, talk about this. So I uh, dare to say to the organizing of uh, We Share Fest that next year they have a special, a special section on how to treat commons, all right? And I think this is extremely important. To make you an idea why it's important, I mean, the laws of property, intellectual property, are a local solution for treating a common, which is intellectual pr production. And economists, even orthodox ones, know they are very wrong. <laughs> yeah, they have to change have to be changed uh, quite, quite soon. And there are other examples, but I think we yeah, might... Just a just okay, okay, a we'll last go. question, you know, uh, that I think that is very interesting point to set, you know. I, I think one of the m things that make us in Latinos more different, and on the other hand, more in the long-term tradition of utopian socialism, and, and the traditional, the traditional al alternative to real existing capitalism is that we fight for abundance. We have here today, and it's a, it's a thing becoming regular, the degrowth, degrowth speech. And many of the people here, I think, feel that the main idea of the growth, that is economic growth of value, produces depletion of resources, is a real thing, you know? But from the point of view of our economic model and point of view of Las Indias, we, have, we just believe the opposite that the way the path toward abundance doesn't deplete resources, so the transition is not towards a transition which will produce less value, but more value. And I think that's an important point. That's a very basic thing, extremely important. But of course, uh, I will be very willing to be here with you with my blackboard and go on and on and on explaining all these things. And what he has just mentioned is not easy to explain. It has to do with the scales. And orthodox economies, we always talked about increasing returns to scale. The better is the scale, the, the more are the number of air buses that we construct in Europe, and especially in Sevilla where eventually they fall to earth, okay? The smallest is the cost of each unit. This is gone, this is a waste of resources. I mean, and we need to have uh, economies of scope. And each community, each firm has to do different things and more focused on communities who buy or are interested in this collection of things that on producing a bigger number of, of, of ob objects. And let me end up so uh, a lot of thanks, uh, talking, Juan. Now, talking about po politics, okay? <laughs> Even orthodox economists, we are, cannot be unaware of politics. What is the form of politics, which is the structure of politics that we favor in us Indians? Without any doubt, a confederation. Not a, a unitary state, not even a federation. And Europe might learn from this idea. We need a confederation.
okay, where, where nobody has the last word, the last authority. There is not such a thing as the last authority. Everything, and I mentioned some of the talks I have heard, we need to talk about everything, and we don't trust at all an ultimate authority like, for instance, the central banks, which I would say and on the basis of many difficulties of the world economy. Thank you. Thank you, Thank very, you very much. much. Thank you. Thank you. Oops.